Hello and welcome back to question 5, exponential functions. In this question, we have to solve an exponential equation. And this question is a tough one because it does not look like the typical ones that we've been practicing in school or the one that we've done in practice. So um, this question is also evil because it is not the same. Most students get stuck in the first or second step and they don't know how to move on, which means that you lose quite a lot of marks uh, from the five marks over here. So let's look at what uh, most students did. So first of all, we want to factorize everything to prime basis. So you probably will have written something like this, right? Nine to the power of k can be written as three square to the power of k. Four to the power of k is two square to the power of k. And six to the power of k is two to the power of k times three to the power of k, right? So this will look like your next step, something like this, okay? And this is where most students get stuck because they will say something like, oh, let two to the power of k equals to y. Okay, and then hopefully we can substitute everything and then solve a quadratic equation from here or a linear equation sometimes. Right, but the problem is I also have 3 to the power k. And if I let it equal to x, then I have two unknowns and that makes it very hard to solve. Okay, and this is where most students got stuck. Okay, so if you managed to do this, good on you. If you didn't, don't worry. This is a good opportunity to learn how to do this kind of questions when you have two different prime bases, two and three. What do you do? Well, the solution is to combine them. Right, let me delete this first. How do I delete this? Okay, there you go. Right, I'm going to divide throughout by 2 to the power k and 3 to the power k. Divide throughout by this, yeah? So if I divide throughout, I'm going to get 3 times 3 to the 2k divided by 2 to the k, 3 to the k. Carrying on with the next term, it's the same thing. 2 to the k, 3 to k, and this is just a 5. Right, and why does this work? Because then I can cancel. Now, 3 to the 2k is actually 3 to the power k times 3 to the power k. Right? So if I cancel away 1, 3 to the power k, in the numerator, I'm just left with 1, 3 to the power k. Likewise, for the next term, right? we can cancel this, then I'm just left with 2 to the power k in the numerator. Now, rewriting this, I can say that this is 3 times of 3 to the k, 2 to the k. And my next one is 2 times in a reverse order, right? 2 to the k over 3 to the k. Now, the next step, I'm going to do this. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to make it uh, the working a bit more clearer. I'm going to write it as this, but I have to slap a negative 1, a negative sign to my powers, right? I can change positions on numerator and denominator as long as I attach a negative sign. Okay, then I'm going to let, this is the important part, huh? x equals to 3 to the k over 2 to the k. That's it, yeah? This is how we solve this kind of questions. So I get 3x plus 2 over x equals to 5. And from here, you can see the quadratic equation, right? 3x squared minus 5x plus 2, multiplying throughout by x, moving the 5 over, this is what I get. And you get, after factorizing, 3x and x, this is uh, minus 2, minus 1. Okay? So that means 3x equals to 2, or x equals to 1. So x equals to 2 thirds, or x equals to 1. Okay? Let's substitute back. So we have 3 to the k, uh, 2 to the k. So that's 3 over 2 to the power k equals to 2 over 3 or 3 over 2 to the power k equals to 1 now for the right hand side it's easy k must be equal to 0 right for anything raised to the power of something equals to 1 then k should be 0 right on the right hand on the on the one on the left is a bit more tedious but we can write this as 3 to 3 over 2 to the power negative 1 so k equals to negative 1 and that is your answer k equals to negative 1 or k equals to 0 yeah Pretty cool question, yeah? So let's look at uh, part B. In part B, we have to uh, do a bit of search, right? We have to simplify this monstrous looking fraction into this, right? And it's four marks. But the steps are actually surprisingly easy. Now I copied down uh, the exact um, expression over here. And what I'm gonna change actually is the term over here in the square root in the denominator. 
a square minus b to the power of 4. This is actually the same as a difference of two squares. Like a square minus b square is a plus b, a minus b. This will be a minus b square times a plus b square. So let's rewrite that. Okay. a minus b square, a plus b square. Okay, I'm going to use a bit of color coding. You can see an a minus b square here. You can see an a minus b square raised to the power of 3 over here. Okay, and you can see uh, a plus b squared over here, a plus b squared over here. And they're both under the square root, the white and the green ones. So we can cancel them. Right, and this cancels with this. This one reduces the power to just a square. Okay, and then if you think about it, you have a square root and you have a square here. The square root will cancel with the square. Okay, so in my next step, I'm just going to have a a minus b squared in my numerator. Yeah, take some time to digest this. Right? There's a lot of cancellation going on. And then the bottom will just be root A plus B. Okay, so it's not over yet because we actually have a square root in the denominator. Now, we don't like to have square roots in the denominator because um, back then, in the, when we do mathematics, usually it's for signs, right? So we want to have numerical values to approximate certain things or to find out what are the results of experiment. Okay, so having a square root in the denominator makes it very hard for us to calculate a numerical value. So what you want to do is to rationalize the denominator, make sure there are no square roots in the denominator. And how we do that is to multiply by the conjugate of your denominator like this. Okay, let's put a bracket here, let's put a bracket here. So for the numerator, uh, it's quite straightforward. I'm not going to expand it out actually. That's root a minus b. And for the bottom, you can see when we multiply by a conjugate, it's just a, a plus b, a minus b thing again, right? Then I'll get root a square minus b square. So root a square is just a minus b square. Oh, look, I can make another cancellation. Cancel, cancel. And then I'm just left with root a minus b. So the question states that, hey, you have to write it in the form of m root a plus n b. And we have done that, just the m is equals to 1 and n equals to negative 1. And that is question uh, 5b, right? It's 4 marks, but it's a lot easier than part a. Right. Hope that helped, and I'll catch you in the next question, question 6.